Let the boys here this morning. I met Jono here, they're from um, Murapara and Jono here. I met them on the boat. So we're about to get off, we're first off with a look of it. Here's Jono here from Murapara. This is his first trip around the South Island, so he's having a look around. They got their wives behind them in a camper van. Uh, Blenheim. I've been through Blenheim now. I picked up a bit of food for the night and some fluid and a bit of breakfast. There's the big wineries as we go through. A bloke come over to me from the North Island there and uh, he is going through right through there tonight so he and I are going to ride the first part up to my campsite uh, and then uh, he'll carry on. He's got a support vehicle going with him, so that'll be a bit interesting. I just looked down and my bloody phone's not in the holder. Did I have a shot of adrenaline then? But I just remembered that I had uh, put it into my inside pocket. I thought you'd gone. Oh, my bloody iPhone 11 Pro. Woohoo! Out the door. Anyway, we've got a wee ride here just over to a place called Seddon and that's where we turn off and that's where I'm going to meet him on the intersection here. Let me tell you a story about the uh, front visor here. When these bikes, uh, when I first got it, there was a little wee stumpy uh, sun, uh, wind visor here. It only just uh, deflect the wind off the, off the instruments really. And so I got a, a taller one and I didn't really appreciate how good it was until um, uh, doing this videoing and things and talking because the wind distortion now at 100 k's just flies right up over the top of my head. I can put my hand vertically above me and I don't feel any wind until it's up about 6 inches above my head. Now I've had to strengthen that one, to just see these two bars here, they're strengthened to um, take the whip out of it for the uh, GoPro GPS to sit on the screen there. And so far that's working good, it's not twitching like it was, and it's not, um, and I can read the GoPro at any time as well, so that's marvellous. Now why do I say GoPro when I should be saying GPS? That's because I'm half concentrating on what I'm saying and half concentrating on the bloody road here because you just make one mistake here and whammo! Lovely talk this bike, what year am I in? I'll have a look in a sec. I'm down in number four and it just does it easy, you know, I could, no doubt if I was more experienced rider right, I'd come up here a lot faster but I don't need to do that. So this is about 24 k's across from uh, Blenheim over to Seddon here, to the Awateri Valley. That was an old cattle track bringing cows into, out of uh, Nelson and down to Canterbury or the other way around. They'd walk them right up the Awateri over and then back down the Wairau Valley. Eventually they found a different way to bring them through the lakes down the bottom there, the Rotoidi way there, and that saved the more cows walking through this big area. 
In New Zealand, we're quite lucky. There's bugger all wildlife or uh, animals get on the main highways. And it's just not like Aussie. See, the farmers keep their fences all lined up either side there. And even the valleys are fenced out so that the animals can't get out onto the road. And uh, that makes it safer. I, yeah, I've never... It's only on the very back roads that you see animals run over, really, but these roads here, it's all well fenced. I think it's part of the, uh, the strategy, make sure that the uh, boundary fence fronting the road is A grade. But that just gave me the thought of, of the story of my friend Ozzy, over in Aussie there, Bernie Hurd. He was out on a ride they're going right around Australia or somewhere heading up from Adelaide towards Alice Springs on that highway there and they ride the, the most experienced riders in the front with the uh, GPS and he knows the track and plans the routes and the stops and all that and then they put the inexperienced riders right behind him so that they don't get lost and they can keep up the pace and they can judge how they're going and all that sort of thing well Bernie's done it many times so he rides about four or five in the pack, you see, so he's back there. And that's, they're getting a long day after day. This is about day four of their trip up to Darwin, I think it was. And going up through those deserts, see how they, uh, Bernie, out the right-hand side there, he spotted a mob of bloody emus, and they would move, the, the emus move out towards the middle of the road. Well, they kept coming, kept coming, and then one, charged out and put its foot through the front wheel of the bike just in front of Bernie. Well Bernie hit the sprags and avoiding this massive bloody tanglement in front of him there of emu, bike and man going down the road at about 100 k's in a hell of a ball in front of him. He was able to stop and uh, one of the riders went on for help and one went back for help and uh, the bloke was badly injured, he'd uh, fractured his pelvis and bones and God knows what. But one, it took about uh, three hours for the helicopter to come from Adelaide up to uh, rescue him and, and get him back to Adelaide Hospital and he was there in traction for quite some time. But. Uh, what uh, a humorous part of a story like that was that uh, when Bernie got off his bike and went over to him to see if he was all right, the, the emu disentangled itself from the bike and took off into the scrub as though nothing was happening, just looking back over its shoulder to see that it wouldn't even get hit caught or anything. The hardy animals. Not a bone was broken. He said it would just run as though it was normally running. Anyway, we hope there's no emus or ostriches or any animals going to run out and grab me when I'm going up this Molesworth Road. And I think it's coming up. Yeah, this is it here, alright. That's the valley there we're going up. So I'm just going to wait here for this bloke for a wee while. And I'm probably going to cook here too. But I'll pull up here and he'll see me no trouble at all. So here we go. I'm at a place called Sedan. I'm making sure that I'm full. It only took another four litres of fuel there. But that just may be what helps me get out of the bingo. And I'm riding with... Uh, Roger here. He's from uh, Napier. I'll leave the bike there. I'm the only one here tonight. This is a working high country station. I'm able to put my gear out and get it all dry. There's my boots drying, my jacket drying, my trousers drying. And this here's the cook house. So we've got a lounge like so. And a cook house here. So this is how I can make myself comfortable. But I called into the uh, New World in uh, Blenheim there and bought some food. It was a beautiful big uh, 
vegetarian quiche there but it fell off the bike and that's all I get left the rest is scattered to the magpies so I've got that for tea the remnants of that <laughs> and a corn here a stick of corn so that's got to tide me over it until I get through to uh, Hamner Springs tomorrow where I can have a good scoff there this whole bag here was on the back of my bike and lucky the bloke riding with me was able to pick it up and fetch it on to me anyway that's the catastrophes of motorbike riding when you haven't got big panniers you get bereft of tucker the plenum is up here and i refueled here at uh, Seddon and come back in up the Awateri Valley here I'm about here, somewhere about here is where the Camden Cookhouse is. This is the working farm for this whole area here. And then you come on further and Molesworth's here. Molesworth's much bigger, I understand. And I'll have a look at that tomorrow. And then we snake our way through here, through this road and down on through here. I think Hamner Springs is out here where my finger is there. I'm the only one here this evening where no one else is booked in. So you can sleep anywhere you like, but uh, this is a, a room of four, four beds in like so, and the toilet's through the back there in the bathroom, but I've taken this one in the other room here and spread my gear out in here. So this is my room here tonight, so I'm going to sleep on the far side there and I'll just spread my gear out and get this bit of food that's left over here into me before the flies get it. See him there on the other side there? Get off your bugger. Let's give what's left of it a bit of a zing. To make it a bit more edible. I hope there's not too much gravel in it. I don't think it'll mean too much. See there's an honesty jar. There's some frozen bread out there in the freezer. I can have a bit of toast in the morning and uh, I'll find some jam somewhere maybe in these cupboards here yeah that's got it bubbling I hope this isn't a maze like that let's see how we got on with this corn oh it's pretty good I had to put a bit of butter and salt on that Salt. I think that'll do the job. Looks like other horses are in town as well. Strong gelding. A lovely old mare here. How you doing, girl? Gonna say hello to me? You all right? Good girl. Nice to see you way up here in the Awatea Valley. These are unusual markings around the legs here. See the white marks right around there? It's like she's been hooked up on something. Did I bet? You're a bit of all right, aren't you? Hey? How you doing? All right? What can you smell on me? What a big horse you are, hey? there what do you think of it what do you think of it not much eh? So that's where I stayed till last night, the Camden Cookhouse. It's a high country farm, this side of the river, taking in all these hills here. 
So we had to shut the front gate as I leave and we're away on our adventure up that valley there. The next stop is Hamner. We'll just see how how many k's in it. So it says I've got 300 k's to go but that's if I go back out to the main road and down through Kaikoura and around to Harden. But this is a shortcut through here, probably about 100, 110 k's. So I'll just go through here gently because I'm on my own. I uh, don't want to fall over. But this farm called Camden Farm is uh, takes in all these hills here across to the far ridge there. The, the lady was telling me about the stocking rates here. That farms on that side of the river and with that hill there I get a much higher rainfall than this one here, it's in a big rain shadow so they have to stock it accordingly that means I've got about 80 to 90 Angus breeding cows and then uh, merinos, now I didn't get the number of the merinos but here's the ram paddock here by the look of it Let's count the rams and multiply it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, nine, nine, nine. Yeah, about the same as Des Humphreys and and Victoria. So let's go there. He'd have about um, um, two thousand ewes, I'd say. And she sends the lambs away. They go down under the grapevines and everything uh, during the winter months to keep the weeds down, and that gets them off the farm here as well. So they're down and they're picking around under the grapevines, and uh, that uh, they truck them down to there to uh, get them down there off the farm for the winter months. There's a couple of Angus bulls here. And that would be about right, wouldn't it? Two big Angus bulls to about 80 cows. The ear and the spear. And I see them here, he's putting fertiliser out today. He had his uh, truck there and bucket off with about six big bags of fertiliser. And so I see he's up here on the ridge here, throwing a bit of fert around his farm. Anyway, I better concentrate on my job here. Hello, talking about emus. Well, there's a big, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a big Angus calf going to run out at me. Just to my left here, he's tidied up a strip of land for an airstrip. There's where the fertiliser bin is there. So, you can fly these hills with a top dressing plane be hard to get an airport up in here in these hills but he's got one there this is the northern boundary of Camden Farm here to this river here and then his parents take over from here on apparently better watch the road Let's check out what he's doing here with this crop. I've had a header in here and taken that all off and that's just the rubbish left behind so they might be going to bale it with a crop of barley by the look of it. Bees, uh, bee farming is a big big industry here in New Zealand. You see the nests here, the hive, should I say. we still about, and I'm allergic to the bloody thing, so that's why I'm wearing this uh, neck bandana. So if one hits me in the neck, well, it can uh, have a half a chance of bouncing off. The bloke I was riding with yesterday, he uh, got a sting on his epic lotus.
Here's some merino ewes there. They've fairly recently been shorn. And they'll go through the winter with that coat on, no doubt. The season's changed now. It's uh, into autumn, I would give it. I've got a shower of rain coming behind me. I'm feeling a few spits from that. But up ahead, it's overcast. And the temperature's not too hot anyway to do this right. So there is rain forecast for later this afternoon. And I'm hoping I can get right through here without... Uh, getting too wet because uh, rain is not conducive to videography there's a couple more merinos skinny little buggers aren't they but they're growing for wool up here and there's a big mob of weathers on that other farm she said they keep them for the high country stuff you know the, the ewes are down close I'm not sure that I need to cross this bridge, but I better do it. The most of the traffic's going this way. Glen Lee is the station. It's always nice to see tidy yards, isn't it? There's a tendency to go faster when I'm standing up, but anyway. It seems to be more in control. I'm just steering with my feet rather than the handlebars. I've hardly got a grip on the handlebars at all. Come on, Betsy, you can do it. Come on, Betsy. What number am I in? Number three. Good low-end torque there just to pull me out of that situation. Weather's there up poking around in the Matagari. The weathers have got a big advantage is they only grow wool really and uh, they haven't got a lamb inside them growing inside to keep their condition down. There's another mob here just on the left. Morning boys! Aberdeen Angus is a good uh, breed for the higher country too. They uh, always uh, grow out fat calves and everything and they just poke around in this green grass on the bottom end here. And these fellas here will go away before the winter to somewhere else I'd say. They may keep the replacements back but the, uh, get the numbers down for feeding out purposes during the uh, winter, cold winter months. But I can see a hell of a lot of cows all down grazing through this valley here where they can get to water. And water is a problem here uh, because these creeks do dry up when it's uh, super dry. There's a mob of quails there. Did you see them on the right hand side? So land management is a big deal. You've, uh, you, if you flog it too hard and put too many animals on here, uh, then as sure as eggs the season changes on you and you're stuck with a mob of bloody sheep that you can't feed so even though it looks good you've got to stick to your numbers and just uh, cut your cloth accordingly Hello girls. Hey. 
see the cows are all dotted over the hill there and if we can see them on this paddock they'll be way back there too no doubt won't they Molesworth, two, 10 k's so we might be on the Molesworth station now see we're getting higher because the erosion is lower if you know what I mean you know we're as we climb up the valley we get closer to the uh, snow line and the less vegetation between us and the skyline beautiful roads here though the bike just tolerates this no trouble look I can slip it up to a hundred k's no trouble at all 80 will do though eh? Like the ground lucerne down here on the flats. To bail her up and then uh, feed her out in the winter time. Well, so far she's travelling good. I lost my water bottle that I put on the side there. Huh? Let's carry on. Will I wheel it through or ride it through? I think I'll just wheel it through. There's neutral. Hold on, the gates, please. Shutting on me. That's got it. That's the current Molesworth station there. You're not allowed in there at the present time without permission. We're over that next little ridge there to where the uh, gates are. So from here, Molesworth, it's about eight, 86 k's through to Hamner Springs. I suspect that'll take me two hours. I, I'm only going at about 40 k's an hour, even slower. But anyway, I am enjoying my day up here in the high country. Just lovely. A paddock of lucerne here to the right. Already taken a crop off by the look of it. I've just met Eric and Gary here. The Gary here. They've just uh, cycled up from Molesworth up onto this ridge here. Where are you heading to now, boys? Right through to Hamner? No, we're going to Etron. We're going to the second Cobb Cottage and staying the night there with our trusty wives who are going to have our campsite all set up for us with beers on, on ice. I usually got it too easy. <laughs> and the deck chairs are going to be out and there's a, <laughs> a big bag of ice and the chairs are going to be sitting in it and we're looking forward to that. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. So this backcountry mountain bike riding is great stuff, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Lots of time to look at the view, whereas if you're in a car or I've done a bit of that as yeah. well. Yeah. You've got to watch the road all the time. Mm. It's, a good way. it's a good way to see the country. It is. 
Now that's really good. Oh well, I'm pleased you're enjoying it up here. I am, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, lovely. I'll follow you down the hill and get your get your bum going down the hill. So if ever there's an uphill, it's generally a downhill, and these boys are enjoying this part of it, getting downhill. The Severn River. Now that's the same one as in uh, Wales, I think, isn't it? So we're getting towards the end of the uh, Molesworth Road here. There's a big hawk there, a big black fella, eh? Hey? Landscape's changing now, but also the weather's starting to change too. Uh, what, what temperature we got? 18.5 degrees. Thank you. Something dead there. This line of pylons has gone all the way through the valley, really. And they do tell me that the uh, internet fibre has been laid the whole length of this valley as well. Hello, that was a stoat on the road. I wonder if it's all right. This is the uh, miles where the other end of miles right now. Archer on campsite and this is the Cobb Cottage at this end. There's a dock camp site here at this spot. Hmm. So with uh, 10 k's to go to Hamner I can tick this off my bucket list. I've really enjoyed it in here. The road's just been excellent. I was expecting it to be a bit more of a challenge, but no, it's uh, it's well done. There must be a lot of traffic through here. Yeah. I've got one rattle there where my uh, screen on the front there is chattering away, but it's uh, forgivable on these sort of uh, corrugated roads. Like that is an example. So, when I get to Hamner, it is uh, refuel, fill up my belly, get some fluids on board, and then I'm going to ride about two hours across to uh, Reefton. There's rain due even over on the west coast and down south, so I just need to get off the bike for a couple of days, and there's no better place to do that than at Reefton, so... That's my plan so far. I think I might even get my wet weather gear to the top of the pack so that I can uh, just put it on to stay dry across to there. So the temperature now is down to 16.5, which is not too bad. I 
lost my bottle of fluid that I had strapped to the back there. So that's went, and that means that I haven't had a drink since uh, Camden Cookhouse. But that can be rectified up here just a bit at Hamner Springs. So I'm going to sign off now and we'll uh, bring you back on when I've got another story. Well that's a good warning, Jolly's Pass is now unsuitable for other than experienced drivers with high clearance four wheel drive vehicles. Part is verging on grade 4 or 5 on a scale of 1 to 5. Let's go and do it. This is what I expected the Molesworth track to be like down to this grade here. And it probably was years ago, but now with so much traffic going through there, it's all uh, pretty good gravel roads. But this is Jolly's Pass, up and over and into Hamner, so... I don't know whether it's any quicker or not. <coughs> Bloody big potholes. I've got the preload adjusted up to take account of about 50 kgs on the back of me here. I've got me back uh, top box and a bag there. <laughs> nah, it wouldn't be 40 kgs in total that I've got on the back. So I am travelling light. Travelling light, and it's uh, but the point of gravity, uh, the centre of balance when you're uh, moving it around, you've got to be more careful because uh, you just can't bring it back like you used to be able to, and she's got no weight on it at all. Well, that was the summit of the Jolly's Pass. Now we just got to go downhill all the way to Hamner. That's going down, it's even more tricky than going up. A little bit of trail break and out wide. There's someone else is coming up. Standing on the pegs you can just go left and right and that takes it around potholes and the like so I've got my front right wood covering the back brake and so that just eases me back going down so she's not going away on me on number two I wouldn't say this was technical at all really it's just uh, they put signs up like that they had to keep the tourists out and let it go over over the Jolly's Pass saddle there so now I've just got to roll into uh, Hamner fuel up both tank and tummy and uh, determine which I better give my wife a ring and tell her that I'm through to the other side nice and safe alright over and out for the time being <laughs> 